Hello! Good to see you. Well, can't really see you, but anyways, good to see you again. It's one of the things that you just say, but it doesn't really make sense. But anyways, treat or true? Treat or trust? What's your style of obedience? I was wondering, did you ever train any kind of animal? Like, did you have, Do you have any experience with training animals um, or disciplining them? How, how did you approach it? Well, you know, how did you do it? Um, I have to say, most people probably use treats. The animal does what they want and then the animal gets a treat. That's what most people do. There's only one problem with that, because the animal will only see you as a treat giver, period. Um, so if, the, the, if your dog or cat or horse, if they had enough of treats, um, they won't obey you anymore, because for them it's just the way you get a treat. Whereas if they want a treat, they know which buttons to push. So, in fact, they are really in charge. So you'll struggle to see them obey all the time. Their obedience won't be reliable. They just obey if they want something. And a good example for that is, and you see that, 9 out of 10 dog owners. You see the dog running one direction, and you see them calling and calling and calling and calling, and the dog just keeps running the other direction. Because in the other direction, there is something that is more interesting than the treat that the owner could offer. That's the problem. It's not reliable obedience. You only have their attention and obedience when they want a treat, and if you have one for them. So treats don't do the trick. There has to be another way. There has to be a better way. I don't know if you've ever heard of Monty Roberts or Cesar Milan, but they are, well, Monty is a horse whisperer, or the horse whisperer, and Caesar is like the dog whisperer. And they don't use treats at all, because it's not necessary. What they do them. is basically speak the animal's language. They learn how these animals communicate, which is usually through body language, and then they communicate with them on that level. And then they build a relationship of love and trust and respect. And the result is true obedience. Obedience for the sake of who they are. The animal will now obey them, not for the treat, but for who they are. And that is reliable obedience. Obedience out of love and trust and respect for that person. And they trust that you have got a reason to ask them to do something and you've got a reason and it's for their best to do a certain task and they'll do it. For example, um, I used to do a lot of horse riding and I had a really good relationship with one particular horse that I was riding for years and years. We went on uh, trails and we did a championship and courses and I spent a lot of time with that horse, so we had that, you know, trust relationship. Um, and I don't know if you know, but horses are generally scared easily and they panic very fast when something happens. Anyway, so we were riding along a path and there was like a riverbank next to us and some bushes. And because we were riding there, we scared some ducks or geese, I don't even remember what it was, or pheasants. But, you know, some birds, anyways, they all of a sudden they made a lot of noise and they, they flew out of, of those bushes. And we were a group, maybe seven or eight riders. And all, the whole group panicked. They all started galloping away, uncontrolled, completely panicked, leaving the riders panicking, the horses panicking. My horse and me, though, my horse just had a small, <gasps> made a small jump. And then the ears turned to me, which was like, which is a horse basically asking, what do you say about it? And I just kept calm, you know, I'm not scared of a few birds. So my horse was like, right, we'll just wait. And my horse and I were completely calm and we just waited until the others had 
get, get, gained back control over their horses and, and came back. But see, the difference was they didn't have that relationship of trust with the horse. So their horses saw something that scared them and therefore they reacted and they did not care what the riders did because they didn't trust them. They thought, we have to look out for ourselves, so we run. Whereas my horse trusted me and it trusted that I would do the right thing for the or the best thing for both of us. So it listened to me and it didn't panic and it didn't run. So it's a lot safer as well to have a trust-based relationship. But see, that, that's the huge difference between treat and true obedience. And now, wh why am I talking about this? <laughs> you might be wondering now. But the thing is, we humans, we are very similar. We want quick results, we want to treat, um, we, you know, we like to bargain. Um, we, a lot of the times, I mean, how often do we just come to, to the Lord when we want something? Try to push the right buttons, or oh, I'm going to pray, or, you know, I'm going to be nice, and then He'll give me what I want. And there is a whole false doctrine out there, which, you know, word of faith and the prosperity gospel, um, that, that is exactly what they do, you know, it's kind of just coming to God if you want something and you just give God 10 pounds and you'll get 100 pounds and, you know, it's just these, this bargaining mentality and just, um, I want, I want, I want, I want. This is the mentality that is there and we might not buy into the prosperity gospel or the word of faith movement but subtly we probably still do these things you know we might ask the Lord for so many things that we want but how often do we actually say thank you how often do we actually praise him for what he has given us or just for who he is you know but if you have the right relationship with the Lord, if you trust Him, if you love Him, and if you respect Him, then you will be like one of those well-trained horses, dogs or cats that follow you and obey you because they trust you and they know that it's for their best. And Romans 8.28 says that everything that happens is for our best, for, for us who are, who are called. And, and, and that's the trust, you know, that we obey him and we do what is right, even if we might not understand why, but we do trust that he knows and that he knows uh, that, that, that it is for our best. And we, we do it because we love him and we do it because we respect him and we honor him. And we know that he's got a reason for it. And after all, you know, we, we worry about things and we want things and there's an interesting verse or verses that, um, you know, are kind of interesting or matching to that. And I'm just going to read a paragraph here. It's from Matthew 6 verses 25 to 34, basically the, the rest of chapter 6. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. 
But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And you see, we, you know, we ask for so many things. We want clothes, we want food, we, yeah, we want so many things. And it's not wrong to care for our needs, but it's a different level altogether if we worry about them and if we become demanding and if we see God just as a vending machine. That's the wrong attitude. In fact, what we should seek first is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We should seek the Lord. That's the most important thing. We should serve him for his sake, not for what he can give us. We should praise him for who he is, not for what he gave us. Or we should praise him for who he is, even if he doesn't give us what we want. Martin Luther said, um, we will always get what we need, but not always what we want. Because what we want is not always what we really need. But, you know, God made us, and he knows best what we really need, believe me. It's hard to believe, but it's true. And therefore, I would like you to just, you know, ponder what kind of relationship you have with the Lord. Is it, is it the treat obedience, or is it the true obedience? See you next time.